here are four reasons why cruising is the best option for solo travelers. Number one, you're alone, but not lonely. On a cruise, you have the luxury to decide how social you wanna be or not. And most cruise lines offer solo traveler meetups, although in my experience, those have been kinda eh. I've had great luck meeting people on my own, usually at the pool on the Lido deck. During your cruise, you'll start to see the same people over and over, often at dinner if you go to the main dining room, so it's easier to make friends. Then coordinating times and places to meet up on the ship with your new friends is easy, especially like meeting up for dinner in the main dining room since you're confined to the ship when you're not out in port. Number two, there's built-in entertainment. One of the best parts of cruising in general is the all-inclusive nature, which includes built-in entertainment. You have total flexibility to pick and choose what kind of activities you want to enjoy, and there's usually things like live music, theater, comedy, dueling pianos, karaoke, and so much more. Attending these as a solo traveler seems less weird than doing it out on your own for some reason. And because it's all-inclusive and you don't have to pay for it, buy tickets, you just pop in and out of shows as you wish, which is super easy for a solo traveler. Number three, it's super easy. Cruising is basically a done-for-you travel solution. Once you've checked in and boarded the ship, you don't really have to do anything in terms of planning. There's no rental cars to coordinate or trying to figure out transportation from place to place and being solely responsible for figuring out all the transportation stuff yourself. There's no researching restaurants and entertainment options, booking tickets, reservations in advance or paying for them. It's all there for you with little to no work. So you can truly sit back and relax. If you book a cruise with multiple ports, you can wake up every day, presumably in a whole new country with little or no effort on your part, which is really cool. Number four, it's safe. I hate to say that traveling solo, especially for women, can be a little intimidating sometimes from a safety perspective. I love that cruise ships usually have great security teams and guests are all checked for weapons before boarding the ship. And the cruise lines, they're really strict about this. Security makes sure guests are safe on board and you can safely participate in excursions when you're out in port, as these are with escorted groups and the crew checks in to make sure that you get back on board. Of course, there's never a 100% safe environment, but compared to non-cruise options, I personally find cruises to be a much safer choice. And bonus reason? Flexibility. When I travel solo, sometimes I like to sit back and relax. Other times I like to go hard with nonstop activity. Sometimes I like to plan a rigid schedule and other times I like to have not an agenda and just go with the flow. With a solo cruise, I love that I get to make all these decisions myself without having to negotiate, argue, or consult with anyone else. And if you make cruise friends on board, you can easily split up, do your own thing separately, and link up later somewhere on the ship. A cruise gives you tons of flexibility. As I mentioned, there's so much entertainment, food options, you can try new food items that you've never tried before, and it's all, well, mostly included. Now, caveat, and this can be a big one. The downfall of solo cruising is that most cruise lines will charge solo travelers for two people, or let you cruise solo, but charge you what's called a single supplement, which honestly really kind of sucks. Now, there are some lines, notably Norwegian and Virgin Voyages, that do have some solo cabins. Theirs are usually called studios, although studio options are usually really limited. Now, another option is to do what I do, which is to work the system and score free cruises through the casino programs, and I have other videos about that. And that, of course, is the most affordable way to cruise, especially if you're solo. I'm currently on a Royal Caribbean cruise that was free through a casino offer. Although even with free offers, you do have to pay port fees and taxes. So it's not truly free, but for this particular cruise, which is a four day Bahamas itinerary with two ports, I only paid $117 and that's even as a solo cruiser. Now, another option is to search for off season itineraries, last minute sailings or things like that, which are often significantly cheaper. So there you have it, the reasons why to cruise solo and ways to do it on the cheap.